Okay, everybody, let's get started. Um, I think we're only going to really vote on one today. There's, you can see on the list discussion, and I have a couple other things to discuss. We've got the CEF issue that is out there, and we've also got um, uh, the health um, disparities bill from yesterday. That was voted in finance, and I want to talk about that too. But let's um, let's start with 885. Uh, Senate Bill 885 is the an economic development uh, bill. It creates an income tax credit for catalytic revitalization projects. So it creates a 20% a credit for the qualified rehabilitation costs incurred for a qualified catalytic revitalization property. There's a definition of, of that type of property in the bill, um, and the idea is that the credit would go to assist with the, um, the reuse or redevelopment of uh, former governmental type properties, so like schools, hospitals, mental health facilities, military facilities, and installations. Um, the amount of the credit is limited to, um, and this is done by amendments, there should be a reprint on your desk, uh, the amount of the credit is limited to $15 million per project, but the number of projects that the Secretary of uh, Department of Housing and Community Development can issue is limited to one project for a two-year period. Um, the the amendments that are or the pro, the credit is also uh, refundable, transferable, and uh, can be carried forward. Um, the amendments in front of you would also limit the um, the ability to um, recapture the credit after it's been transferred by by one of the credit recipients. Um, in addition, the um, the sponsor. Um, came up with an issue because of the, the federal provision um, that was, uh, could impact federal funds. The, um, the credit won't be issued by the secretary until after January 1st, 2025, unless the comptroller determines that issuing the credit would not impact federal funds that the state's going to receive under the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. Uh, this goes to address that, the vague provision that we've been discussing um, regarding the um, the federal law. Um, the one other additional amendment would uh, require that the project um, the project can be made up of new construction costs and rehabilitation construction costs. The new construction costs cannot exceed 50% of the total amount of the project. So that would mean that your rehabilitation construction costs have to be 50% or, or greater. Um, and Finally, the amendments would authorize the credit to be claimed by a nonprofit in addition to an individual and business entity. Questions about this bill? Right Which is the project? I vaguely remember the testimony. What is the real deal here? It's uh, the Warfield, it's Warfield, right? Uh, yes, I believe that's Warfield, the Warfield, it was the old, um, I don't even know which department owned it. I guess it was, was it... Um, it might have been health. Um, it's in. Um, it's on the board of Howard and Carroll. So it's an old health department yes. property. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Senator Young. I say it was the uh, Sightsville uh, Mental Hospital for years and years. There we go. And uh, but there appears there's going to be other state buildings coming along too. But that's probably the biggest thing in the state. That's. And it's been sitting for years, and I think needs something like this to make it happen. Very good. Senator Alfred. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We also have a, a similar uh, old hospital here in Crownsville that has just been sitting uh, because of, frankly, lack of the ability to leverage dollars to, to, to address it. So I... From my understanding from the sponsor, this bill would help with those types of projects, not just Sykesville, but similar projects across the state, including Crownsville. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, it's interesting. I, when it was first brought up to me, because I, as I think, as you know, I'm um, kind of a big supporter of using sales and use tax exemption for construction materials, and we've used that um, in a number of places to get things uh, moving again. But we talked very specifically about it, and 
would not work in their configuration on this from a financial standpoint. So um, I think this is a good solution for them. Uh, Senator Young? This is very similar, same type thing as the historic tax credits we've had. And I can tell you they were tremendously valuable in bringing Frederick back. And I'm sure other places, but speak of that one because of my involvement. Senator Rosebeth? Yeah, again, just curiosity. So there's an actual development plan for this property with an actual developer? Yeah, I don't know how planned it is at this point. I mean, I don't know if what's laid out or whatever, but somebody wants to to develop it, yes. Well, that's sort of my question. I don't know, maybe Matt knows. I, I, and, and same issue with Crownsville, actually, in Anne Arundel is, I mean, I've never paid that much attention to these properties. We, we have uh, one in Prince George's. I'm drawing a blank on the name of. Um, similar kind of thing, Old State Hospital. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, Glendale. I'm, Glendale, yeah, exactly. And I'm just always curious as to why they're hard to develop and sort of I mean, they're big pieces of land, obviously. Yeah, um, and, they're, and usually they have environmental issues. Usually the buildings are old and have asbestos and you name it. Well, it's and a brownfield kind of problem. It basically. is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Gotcha. But do we have any sense of what the proposals, either for Crownsville or for this, are in terms of are we talking about, you know, a, I mean, it's a golf resort? Or are we talking about mm -hmm. single family houses? Or are we talking about. I, I, let that, I let that be up to the locals on that one. No, I shouldn't. Just curious. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. I heard a motion over here. Yes, move, second. Move, uh, favorable. Okay. Second. All right, all those in favor as amended. Unanimous. Uh, yes, I did know. Senator Edwards is in training. So. Um, Okay, um, I'm going to go off, off script here for a minute on a couple of these things. Um, one is, um, as you know, we voted out that health disparities bill the other day. Um, and we were first and finance was second. And they voted this morning and amended our amendments. Um, so we're going to have to get back together with them um, to try to work through that. You may recall I was discussing when, when we put forth or I put forth the amendments that we had last week that a lot of this centers around um, the startup of the process um, to get this going and then the long-term continuation of it. They were thrilled with our financing of it all, um, but they believed that, um, that uh, and they're fine with the um, Community Resources Commission, Health Community Resources Commission, starting it up, um, but they want the health department to take it over. I've been concerned about the transition on all of this all along, and um, so they actually changed it to make the health department um, in charge. So um, I think we'll have a little work group with them. I'm proposing that we, the three of us, go over and talk to them, and, I'm, and I was figuring on Melanie and, um, and Addie um, doing that. Um, so just a F, FYI, that is likely to be coming. Um, the other thing is that um, we ha there are four bills out there right now, um, and they're all in finance, and, and none of them are moving. And they, I think they're looking for advice for us from us on CIF. They're all CIF-funded issues. Um, and um, this is another one where I think I'd like to get uh, some of us together, and maybe some of them too. We'll see how that uh, works out, see how serious they are about moving those. Um, but Sam, Senator McCray, that's in your area, right? It is. Yep. Would, would you be able to say the bill numbers that we're Absolutely. in front of it? Yep. Um, Senate Bill uh, 392, 460, 462, and 810. 
Got it. Um, and um, I was thinking about um, getting just tentatively you, Senator Salling, and Senator Alfreth, um to to get together on that. Okay, but that's just that one may just be internal with us for for a first look at. Okay. Um, now I want to go back to the uh, sheet for discussion. Um, <laughs> this is this is Senator Hester's day. Um, so we've got two bills here, and I'm just going to quickly go over them, I, or get Erica to go over them. Uh, finance is the primary. They have not taken action on them. Not sure that they are going to take action on them. Um, but um, I think there's a possible solution on these if we can make both of them contingent, just like we did with Senator Rosapep's bill the other day, on use of federal funds. Um, so just a quick description on those, just so everybody's aware of it. Se 788. Yep. Um, so Senate Bill 80, 788 creates a new program um, within the Department of Commerce called the Capital Access Program. Um, the purpose is to stimulate small businesses that have difficulty obtaining business finances um, by creating basically a reserve account for them. Um, initially, the bill came in requiring an appropriation of $10 million. Um, with an intent uh, statement that $50 million would be provided by in federal funds if they're allowed to be used for those purposes. Um, part of the, uh, oh, that's a different bill. Um, so that's effectively the bill. There is some administrative cost as well of $110,000 on the part of Commerce to administer the program. Okay. The next one, which I'm actually, uh, more interested in myself personally is, is how we're dealing with all the cyber stuff. And I know we keep talking about it. I just never feel like uh, I'm, I, I continuously be, I'm worried about this for, for us. But so if you could give a little couple words on that. Nine I didn't hear two. that. Sorry. Yeah. 902. What? We're moving to 902. Got it. Thank yep. you. Sorry. For yep. some reason, this blocks your sound. No problem. <laughs> Okay, Senate Bill 902 um, is another program that would be created within the Department of Commerce um, called the Cyber Workforce Program, kind of within their existing Partnership for Workforce Quality Program, which is PWQ is its abbreviation. Um, here the idea is that it would support um, cyber careers, educational training scholarships, um, cyber-related activity, workforce development, and apprenticeship programs. Um, it does create a special fund. Um, in order to support the activities of the program and the special fund has several potential um, revenue sources to capitalize the fund. Um, initially the bill, um, let's see, this one is drafted to the extent that any federal or other funds become available. Um, up to 25 million or more according to the fiscal note. It does also stipulate a couple of other revenue streams into it. Um, and I believe the fiscal note basically indicates that a, you know, could be minimal. We don't know what those additional revenue streams may be. Um, and this one also has 160,000 of administrative costs. Okay. Um, so I guess I should also preference some of this discussion with I spent the uh, the weekend um, going through pretty much everything, <laughs> all the bills that we've done, all the bills we've passed. Um, we we are we are hitting up to a limit uh, clearly um, about out year spending, and so um, as we move forward, and and we've we've done this even along the way, but the possibility of modifying bills. Um, uh, sometimes to get them going at lower lower dollar amounts, using federal dollars. This is what I. This is going to be the theme I think for the remainder of the session. That we're going to have to keep doing that, and we're going to have to. If we want something to actually move, we're going to have to be even more aggressive than we have been before. 
Okay. Um, let's move on to 958. We heard this last Friday. Um, Senate Bill 958, uh, this is a bill that deals with the non-public special education schools. Essentially what it's saying, and there is a technical amendment um, that I don't have a reprint for you. It's, it's two additional, a couple additional words. Um, what this would say is basically for 2023, um, the governor would be required to provide an additional amount of funding in order to provide um, a 4% increase. Um, for certain positions at these schools, as well as an additional increase of not less than 2% or the CPI um, over 2022. So it does create a single year uh, mandate. The technical amendment would be on page three um, in this section where it says um, to clarify that this money is in addition to their current law required statutory funding. So it's a single year mandate and I, I was looking at this bill over the weekend too, um, but is that? But it adds to the base. No. 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 It's just a one-time. Okay. It's interesting. Senator Zucker. It is. It is interesting, and part of uh, the calculation for the Education Business Administration Subcommittee was putting in budget language to look at the salary structure to see in the out years to, to reframe it. Um, that's not, not necessarily a money mandate. It's more of an intent mandate. But this would give them that, that, that bump for fiscal year 23. Because, so it's really just like giving them a bonus, whatever. Yeah, and then we can figure it out. I mean, I think the intent in the future, uh, working with the administration, is to eventually get them to parity with the public school teachers. But right now it's giving them that bump in, in fiscal year 23. Okay. All right. Um, and then on to the next one. Senator Sollings, 904. Senate Bill 904 creates a sales and use tax free period for the purchase of uh, university and college textbooks. So it there would be a seven day period um, that's designed to correspond with the start of the um, college year. And then there's another seven day period in February that I think is designed to, to correspond with the this spring semester uh, for college students. And it would create um, uh, a tax free period for the purchase of um, uh, college textbooks. Um, the fiscal note projects the, the reduction in, in general fund revenues to, to be about $8 million a year. Um, yeah. I mean, I think this is a good idea, but a, a, a significant price. I don't know what we can think about on this, um, if there's a way to modify. So the, the normal um, tax-free thing only happens once a year. Is that right? Yes, we, we've got a couple of them. There's, um, there's a tax-free period for the purchase of Energy Star efficient appliances, and I think that's in, in February. The back-to-school tax-free period is one time in, um, in the summer, or at the end of the summer. All right. Senator Salling? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate, uh, I had discussions with uh, uh, Senator Zucker about some of the programs that they have out there already. It's like 16 programs they have throughout the state. And something that maybe we could possibly look into to see possibility if one of those programs we can possibly attach this to to promote it and to help it out. Um, I think a lot of times we question about the fiscal notes. I think I think this is one we can question because I, a lot of times they're subject <laughs> to be uh, scrutinized. I think at times for all of us, I think there's something we can look into. But I, I think overall, I think with uh, – from what I discussed, we're like touching the hem of the garment, but I think we can do more for our kids. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Anybody else have any other thoughts on that? Any other issues hanging out there? Obviously, we're not doing, uh, we're not going to make crossover on anything we do right now. Um, Senator? I need to caucus with uh, Senator Edwards on Senate Bill 577. I got a call from Appropriations Chair this morning. What is that? That's the uh, makerspace. They were doing the next one in Western Maryland, and I'm crossed out with Mike McKay, who's also Western Maryland, and me and Georgia are number one and two on this. Okay. Did we, didn't we, did we move that? 
We did uh, not move that. Right. It hasn't moved, and uh, I thought that the House was going to move, and we were under that, and they're trying to see if the Senate could do something. Gotcha. 577? Seven, seven. Yes, sir. Great. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? All right. Well, we put the budget on the floor today, and uh, it'll get, what's that? Laid over. We'll lay it over and special order tomorrow for Wednesday. So, so really, in terms of prep, we need to be ready for Wednesday. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Let's go get them. Thank you all.